we turn now to uh, a physical interpretation of the derivative. Um, derivatives, of course, exist mathematically. We went through the definition of a derivative is, we went through methods of finding derivatives, and all that is true, even if the derivative had no particular physical meaning. But fortunately, the derivative actually does have a physical meaning, which uh, can be used to solve various types of problems. And what we want you to think of the derivative as is as a rate of change. This is in fact uh, the, uh, the this is in fact the name of uh, section 3.4 in the Thomas textbook because it's fairly important interpretation of a derivative. Um, now you can think of a derivative as is is the instantaneous rate of change of some quantity. The uh, we can talk about that purely in the abstract and it works for a, a lot of different types of quantities. But perhaps the easiest way to envision it is uh, through motion problems. So. Let me just uh, put up uh, the, just sort of a generic motion problem and a definition. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a function s of t. Uh, I don't know why we use the term s, but, but we do. Uh, s of t uh, is the displacement or position of an object as a function of time. So if you imagine that I have some object, we usually call it a particle, and it starts, actually it can really start any place, but let, you know, let's for simplicity, let's say it starts at the beginning. So we have here some origin. And what we can see is uh, I'm just going to draw the object being it being over uh, its uh, the number that represents its position. This is an object that only moves horizontally like that. It doesn't move vertically at all. It just moves horizontally. So um, what the displacement does is it it measures the distance of the object from the origin. So let's suppose that at time t equals zero, the object starts at the origin. It doesn't have to. It could start four miles from the origin if we wanted to. But um, all right, let's let's not confuse units. Let's say that these are meters, not miles. So it could start four meters from the origin, but just for simplicity, let's say that it starts at t equals zero. So the object is moving and moving and moving, and let's say that by the time it's t equals one, the object is here. And uh, then, let's say that at time t equals two, the object is here, and then uh, since I want to I want to show its motion, I'm even though imagine it moving in a horizontal line, I'm going to move it a little bit out of that line. So let's suppose that at t equals three, it's here, and at t equals four, it ends up here. So this object is really just kind of going back and forth in in sort of a haphazard way. the uh, The point is that I can measure the average speed of the object. If let's you know let's say I want to know what was its average speed between time equals zero and time equals two. Well, what I would do is I would look at how far the object, uh, how far the object is, uh, or sorry, how far the object traveled in between seconds, second t equals zero and second t equals two. And we'd say that, um, what we'd say is that at s of two, in other words, at time two, the object's displacement is four, and at s of zero, its displacement was zero. So we would say that it traveled a distance of four minus zero in two seconds, giving it an average speed of, or an average velocity, I should be more precise, of two meters per second. So let's suppose that instead I want to know what is, you know, what is its average speed, let's call this time t equals h for a tiny little bit of, a tiny little bit of, of time. If I want to know what its average speed is over time, between time zero and time h, where h is just some really, really tiny number, like let's say h is 0. 0.00001 second, well then I could do the same thing. What I'd do is I'd say, what is its position at s of h, what is its position at s of zero, and divide that by h minus zero. But if you notice, this looks very much like the calculation that we did when we were finding the derivative. We were asking, you know, what is s of 0 plus h minus s of 0 over h, which is, is exactly, just in a slightly different form, is exactly what we have here. So this, if I, if I were to take the limit, if I were to take the limit of this expression as h approaches 0, in other words, if I took the limit of that expression, what I would have is the derivative at 0 of the displacement function. So uh, what the, what the derivative is doing, so if, if we, if calculating the, uh, the, the distance traveled over time and dividing that gives us the average velocity over some period of time, then calculating it over what essentially amounts to zero time gives us the instantaneous velocity, and it's the exact same calculation that we did to find the derivative. So, 
it might be a little bit easier to see graphically if I were to map displacement this way. So I didn't want to do it this way because we're imagining the object moving horizontally and I have to introduce a vertical dimension in this graph. But the uh, uh, here what we're doing is I'm simply, I'm simply showing what displacement as a function of time would look like. So if that's s of t and this is t, here uh, what we're doing is we're mapping distance from the origin on the vertical axis and time since the beginning of time on the horizontal axis. So if I were to ask, you know, once again, what is, well, actually, let's pick two different numbers. Let's say, what's the, what's the average, what's the average velocity between t equals 4, oops, sorry, between t equals 4 and t equals 6. So here what we have is we have s of 4 is equal to 0, and s of 6, we can read it off the graph, is approximately equal to 3. So what we'd say is that the average velocity, average velocity is equal to s of 6 minus s of 4, that's the y values we're subtracting, minus 6 over 6 minus 4. So that's going to be 3 minus 0 over 2, which is 3 halves. That's the, the average velocity. But notice that this calculation is also the slope of the secant line. In other words, if I were to draw this line through here, what I would get is what I would get is is the average velocity. So this, so the slope of that secant line is actually equal to the average velocity. In that context, it's probably a little easier to understand why, if I wanted to know what the average velocity actually at t equals four was. In other words, what would it be if I wanted to find the slope of a line between two points while also making those two points really just one point like we did with the derivative calculation, the slope of this line would just be s prime of 4. In other words, the slope of the tangent line at 4. So that gives you some sense of why the, of why the velocity is, uh, of why the instantaneous velocity is the derivative. Let me put up what the, what the true relationship is uh, between functions for motion problems. So uh, what we have is uh, we have the function s of t, which gives displacement. And I'm just going to say let's measure it in meters as a function of time in seconds. There's no reason we can't measure it in other units. We can measure it in miles per month. We can measure it in light years per century. Light year, by the way, is a unit of distance, not a unit of time. Um, you know, you, you measure it in anything you want. But the point is that if we're going to measure uh, the function s of t, where we measure t in seconds and the displacement s in meters, then if we take its derivative, s prime of t, what we get is the velocity, which is now being measured in meters per second, and left out the squared there, and the acceleration, which is the rate at which the velocity is changing, is the derivative of the velocity. Or, since the velocity itself was derivative of position, that means the acceleration is the derivative of the derivative of position, which we can think of as the second derivative of the position. So this is the key to understanding motion relationships in calculus, is velocity is the derivative of position, and acceleration is the derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of position.